So it's us. We're here. We're doing it. Dude, yeah, we're here. We're, we're doing. We're, doing um, we're back. We weren't here last week because last week sucked. But we put in some work last week into other stuff. Now we have art. We have intros. Not great. Is great. The it's art's not great fine. Art. The art is fine. The art will do for now until I figure out how to do better. Um, or until yeah, so we last week we didn't run an episode because doing. there was pretty much nothing happening. And this week is not dissimilar. There's not a lot, but there is stuff. Yes. There is, there was, there's more stuff than there was. Um, which is, one second, Significantly we just more stuff. I think last week, basically all we had we was had like, nothing. the PlayStation, I, the I didn't story. put anything in the Discord, yeah. but like last week I think all we had was like the PlayStation 5 logo reveal, which was like, not a story. Yeah, um, yeah, but we're gonna talk about that right now. Yeah, we will. And, um, so basically, uh, at CES, PlayStation reveal, they, um, they showed off a bunch of stats for the PS4, like, it's sort of lifetime achievement kind of stuff. PS5. Oh, PS4, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, hang on, let me pull up the Discord so I can tell you what they were. He doesn't row, Sam. Uh, yeah, so it was, they sold, um... 106 million PlayStations sold, which I think puts it in contention to be one of the best-selling consoles of all time. I would need to look up the statistics, but that's pretty close. Um, yeah, it's... I think it is the best-selling console of all time, and I think they would have said that. The yeah, PS2 I think they would have said best-selling console of all time. It beat the PS2. Time. But I, I know, I think one of, I think the best-selling console of all time was, like, the Wii, and it sold, like, 110 million. Yeah. Um, 5 million PlayStation yeah. VR headsets sold, which is impressive. Yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive for VR. Of 1.5 1, 1. billion games sold on PlayStation. 103 million monthly active users. And 38.8 .8 million PS Plus subscribers, which is actually kind of low, given the fact that you can... Like, that's less than like, 40% of their install base. Yeah. I mean... Then... They're, they're just trying to get products out there to see what people uh, like, I think is the idea. Because um, Microsoft, they have way more money, they can just, like, throw products yeah, that, at like that, I, as I, works. I've sort of said a lot of times, both to you and probably on the podcast as well, that sort of... Microsoft's strategy has basically, for like this generation, has been like, we don't need to win, we just need to compete because we have so much bloody money that it doesn't matter anymore, and we'll invest big in the next yeah. generation, which they look like they're doing. And then, so after they did that at CES last week, they revealed the logo for PS5, which is, shockingly, it's the same as the PlayStation 4 logo, just with a 5 instead of a 4. Yeah. I'll it's put like, it's on, not even on the screen in the there's um, nothing video version. Nothing different at all. Um, but it's like, I mean, I, I guess that speaks to like brand strength, that like they can just yeah. keep iterating on that forever, as opposed to whatever nonsense Xbox is doing. I still hate Series X. Yeah, and I, get to their terrible, terrible name. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just go. I mean, like 360 is not. Like, that's a, that's a cool name, right? The Xbox 360. I think if they were going to drop um, the the Xbox and they were going to release multiple consoles at the same time and all those consoles were going to come under the brand of Series X. Yeah. But, like, that would be one better. console being referred to as a series is just match. like, what's happening? What are you doing, Microsoft? Infiltrate, identify, yeah, and destroy. they, either, like, every new console would be called a different series. Um... I don't... Like, you'd think it would be the Series X. Slim. Like, I don't... I, I don't know. I, and I much X is supposed to be, Microsoft's like, their more powerful like, um, version, right? Yeah, I guess. I much prefer Microsoft's, yeah. like, uh... Hardware design to Sony's. Sony is still going that weird, like, oh, yeah. apparently... shaped toilet bowl thing. I don't think they've done, like, an official Yeah, apparently reveal. it's a cup holder. But, like, they're, yeah. um... They haven't shown it yet, but it's a cup holder. Um, compared to the fridge, yeah. the fridge looks nice. Honestly, the fridge, the um, fridge is basically just a big black PC, right? Whereas the cup holder yeah. is like weird. Yeah, it's a tower. Um, but yeah, the, 
I don't, yeah, I don't know what PlayStation's doing. They had a pretty much in um, four. I think the Xbox 360 was a nicer design in terms of that generation, in the, in the PS3 generation. Um, I mean, yeah, Microsoft but Xbox always is always kind of doing like black classes, yeah. for better or for yeah, worse. That's... Yeah, so, look, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, this so, is about as much as we can we're on the topic the of PlayStation, the logo. they're going to sit out E3 this year. Again. Yeah, I know. I don't. I don't know how. That, I don't know why. I mean, it's. A, I think it's because it's just like it's an expense it. they don't need. Yeah. And I think they would it, much but... rather run their own event where all eyes can be on them. They don't need to compete with anyone. And it's all. It's just PlayStation till the end, till the cows come home. Yeah, and I, like, exactly. I, th I think I said to you yesterday that, like, honestly, th I think the only reason Microsoft is still attending E3 is because PlayStation isn't. Probably, and as a, just, like, to talk about their money again, they have, they have enough to run their own thing as well as do E3. So, Sony probably doesn't, probably I don't know don't. if they, they have... Or they rather don't yeah, they have to invest. They have that money, money, but they don't want to have, yeah, they don't want to use those expenses. Um, so... You know, it's um, it's an interesting choice. Yeah, we'll to sit out, out their online. PlayStation Five, Five reveal, and do it on their yeah. own. Which I mean, E three's gotten a lot of bad press because they they had that whole thing where they like doxed a whole bunch of like the journalists and stuff that went there. They revealed like all their personal uh, data, so people yeah. are not pleased with E three and. Just in general, apparently E3, like Jason Schreier tweeted out, like E3 last year was pretty dead as far as things go. And yeah. this year they're like they don't have to turn it into like an influencer convention. <laughs> Which I guess makes sense influencer if you want your... Like a VidCon. Yeah. Kind of. Like if you want your uh, like shenanigans to survive, that's kind of the way to go. But I think it'll... I think E3 is on the way out. As I said, I think the only reason Microsoft, like, Nintendo don't go, uh, yeah, Nintendo I think haven't YouTube... gone for donkey's years. EA don't really go, they run their own event that's across the street and runs parallel to E3. Yeah. And, uh, Activision go. Sure. And I don't think Activision do go, they usually piggyback on Sony's event. Yeah. So they'll probably Because they Activision go have year. BlizzCon, don't they? Yeah. So I don't know. Hostile uh, UAV circling. I don't know what the plan is. Um, I don't know if oh this is God, a good dude, play. PlayStation Five it? might not get as many um, players. This is what's this here because of this. I mean, decision. I think so like if your if your mark if your like install base is you know 106 million big, how many people watch E3? Because it's not 106 million. And how exactly. many of those? Of the, you know, let's say a hundred thousand people that watch, that watch E3 live and like actually pay attention to E3, then convert into sales. So I imagine like it's pretty low. Like Not I many. imagine that's why Nintendo doesn't do E3 because it's like, you know, they're aimed at like kids and families and stuff. And kids and families, they're not watching. E3. People like me and you are watching E3 because we're losers, and we live for that yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. And the main it. it... I think it works better as a game marketing tool, but consoles, it's never really been the, um... It's, it's on its way out, I think, for consoles. And I think it... We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think I don't once know how... Microsoft's, like, um, EXO event that they, that they run gets big enough and control. picks up enough, like, Steam and Media Capital that they can do, like, really big announcements there, I think they'll stop going to E3. Yeah. Losing the fight. But we'll see, we'll see. Um... Yeah, the only the only competition that Microsoft has in terms of what's going like between Sony and Microsoft is just the install base. I think people will much rather stay with um, PlayStation. People, yeah, people will much rather stay with what they know than Microsoft but, with different install base. But I think this might be Microsoft's the last barrier console. to entry. I think the barrier to entry. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day. That, like for Xbox, micro, the, like Xbox's value proposition is so much better. Like, it just is. Yeah. Then Stadia and PlayStation, it's a, it's a little bit, like, half and half of the PlayStation, but... Like, the fact like that you can basically Stadia, drop, like, 
30 bucks a month, 40 bucks a month, and get over 100 really Every good second. games like GTA 5, The Witcher, um, all the Saints Row games, they're all on Game Pass, and I'm pretty sure Game Pass Ultimate is only like 15 bucks a month, so you get, the, get it on Xbox and on PC, and then plus like three bucks a month or however much Xbox Live is if you buy it by the year for Xbox Live. Like, that's an insane yeah. value probably. Yeah, so maybe this this might be Xbox's year. We, d we don't know. Um, I mean, I think, I'm like, sure... Don Matrick real... Like, he, he didn't know consoles and he didn't care for consoles and, like, video games. Yeah. So they, like, dropped him pretty quick. And Phil Spencer has done... A lot with not a lot of God's work. Yeah, he's done God's work in in terms of how um how the world because before it was like a media platform, which was like a stupid idea. I don't know. Why yeah, like this sort of like all-in-one yeah. entertainment platform thingy, and then Phil Spencer was like, "We're not doing any of that. We're making games. You know right? This is what we do." Yeah, which is I don't know. It was an idea. They had an idea, Bad together, idea. everything, and it just didn't work. They didn't end game. Um, but yeah, yeah, you got 1.15 billion PlayStation 4 games, all 38.8 million. That's a lot of games, that's a lot it's of money. Lost subscribers, within 3 million monthly active users, 5 million PlayStation VA and all that, yeah. So it's, in, it's insane, it's honestly insane. Um, but yeah, yeah, those, like those, those are, those are big is, numbers. Those are real big numbers. Xbox is trying to convince PlayStation users to come over to the deck. And I think this is the generation that... And as I say, like, Xbox is way, way better, like, buying the value proposition than PlayStation. And while, like, I know, like, I'm a, I'm a lifelong Xbox fan, that's really nice. And I've never touched PlayStation console in my life, because that's a form of blasphemy in my religion. Yes, exactly. So it's like, there are kind of biases there, but it's still like, it's facts, man. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm only biased because Xbox is good. <laughs> they, and Xbox has always had a better online service system than PlayStation. Yeah, and I think they've consistently proven that they, they know what they're doing. Um, but they also had some had some pickups earlier early on which is That's i mean don matrick yeah. he was not interested in video games and making a video game console and like phil yeah, spencer's was... like he's a game developer like that's where he, he i believe he started as like an intern at microsoft and is now the head of xbox phil spencer yeah i i would need to fact yeah, check nice. that that might be bullshit yeah I'm looking but i know he now. started as like code monkey basically like and worked his way up. Yeah, and I, up I think Phil it was Spencer, Kotaku who did this like really good piece Channel about 4. like basically like everything that Phil Spencer's done for Xbox and how he basically like over the span of like a month he basically like revamped the whole team. Yeah, he was an intern in 1988 and worked yeah. on some game titles. So you know, interesting. He's he knows what he's doing. He knows. He's 52 years old, dude. He's, he's not that bad. Yeah, most of those Don't execs are pretty job. old. Um, on, you might say. Is there any footage you want from the carnival? Just all, all of it. Everything. Yeah, I'm not going... I'm not 100%ing the run, just by the way. That's fine. I'm running um, through basically so everything. So, the next story I have listed is the Square Enix delays that... um. Final Fantasy VII Remake and the Avengers game have both been delayed. No man, ready. Oh, Avengers Final Fantasy VII, yeah. which okay, actually sense. looks like I've never played Final Fantasy VII. Super You're not gonna in enjoy it. Okay, I don't know. I think I might enjoy it. Do you like turn-based RPGs? It's not turn-based anymore. Though. Enemy has alpha. I thought it's always it's always turn-based. See secure. Um, not every Final Fantasy has been. But then, like, I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy the remake isn't going to be turn-based. It was originally because they're trying to, like, basically make a whole new game. I don't think it's turn-based anymore. Alright. Well, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure the Final Fantasy games have always been turn-based. Some of them... I mean, there's a lot of them. Some of them have been turn-based. 15 wasn't turn-based. Enemy took Bravo. 12, I think, was. I mean, not 12. 7. Seven. Yes, originally 7, seven was turn-based. 
with the remake of the fan base. Right. I'm pretty sure. I'll believe you. So yeah, like, the, sure this remake's been in the work for, like, that. five years. I forget when they have, like, have originally announced it, but it was about five years ago. And it's undergone, like, so many delays and so many reshuffles of, like... Like, they basically threw out the whole development staff at one point and brought it back in-house. Securing B. Yeah. So that they could do quality control. And it is now being delayed uh, by about a month. From the 3rd of March 2020 to the 10th of April 2020. Securing Alpha. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's not Get that aggressive. bad. That's not like a month. That's not that bad. And, like, you Alpha know, Stone said, gave, like, the, the regular like, PR nonsense. I think that what I wrote down is, make game good, we are very sorry for delay, was basically their statement. Yeah, I mean, this is, like look, shocking. When you look at other games like yeah, Anthem or Fallout Top 76, Anthem, it's Top. like you can Taking Bravo. you can you can take as much time as you want. All right, I'm fine with that because I don't want a game like Fallout 76 or Anthem. 76. Which is um, why, like, I'm I, sorry. I feel like gamers of a whole have like ha had a massive turnaround on their feelings for this. It's like they used to hate them. But I think we've been like burned enough and had enough shitty games that needed a delay that we've now been like, alright, maybe we delay the game Securing and we problem. don't get a shitty yeah. game. Which is, it's really interesting how we're just like, yeah, just don't worry about it, we'll still buy the game. It'll be better if you do this, because then we won't ask for refunds. Then you have us gripping your service, especially with games as a service. Destiny 2 was really lucky at being like one of the first of its kind in on, on console. Um, Losing alpha. But all these other Enemy ones, like, uh, Anthem, Division, Division. I mean, we, we were talking about that the other day. Basically, the only reason that Destiny is as successful as it is is because it was the only thing of its kind. So now, every, and it was yeah. like it was not great at launch. Like, Destiny no. And Destiny 2 was worse. Destiny 1 at Vanilla was not great. Destiny 2 Vanilla was worse. But because yeah. Bungie had the only product of that kind, if you wanted to play, like, yeah. M like MMO light, you know, RPG kind of game on console, you had to play Destiny. Yeah. And then they had the install base Securing uh, B. going into Destiny 2, so they already had people waiting to play. Because they thought the game would be better. And now it's it like one of the biggest games on Steam. And it's it's really good. They've made it... They've, 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 they've fixed it. Don't worry about that. Yeah, which is honestly like probably... Like I think... That like the industry basically learned all the wrong lessons Securing from Bravo. Destiny. That you can like put out a pile of garbage and fix it later. Yeah. Which but is Destiny like was the only one not the case. You need to put out a good game. Just, Either it's, that, it's or you need to put out a unique product, which no one is doing anymore, because the product they're all aiming for already exists, because Destiny exists. This map is it's very it's... excited. Destiny will... Uh, yeah, Destiny's a bad example of how people are making games as a service. Fortnite's probably the better one. Half time. Fortnite's it's sort of a less... A less legit... Less evil? Mm. Yeah, I guess you're not paying Pop smoke the recruit. every every month for it. I mean, you are, but I think like to get the base experience, I don't think you have to pay every month. Whereas I I feel like I would be missing a lot if I wasn't paying for Destiny every sort of month. Which like again, yeah, like, I didn't find this time, and I'm think, not paying. Because I think the content they put out is good, the and I think Bungie's very good at like evolving their content and keeping Securing it continually a. interesting. Like, I think Bungie is probably secure. well aware that people are getting bored of sort Enemy of menagerie light style content, and they need to invent something like new. Yeah. Bravo. And yeah, you, you can only do the, the same thing over and over and over again. And like, the sundial is good. It's just... It's, yeah. it's, the it's a better version of what we... Yeah, it's a better version of what we had in uh, the first one. But I haven't played it yet. So. I don't think it's... I, I wouldn't say it's better than the menagerie. No, no, not... Menagerie, the one before, the one before. Um, Vex and Vex, which is basically like, yeah. good. I think they just need to like, make a way better. Like, Call of Duty Zombies for Destiny. 
Yes. And then just have I mean, that in the game permanently and then be done and move on to something new as opposed to sort of continually recycling the same kind of thing. Yeah. But then you, you asked, what am I gonna, what are you gonna do? I think you should just create a dungeon every, every season. That's my... I mean, the question becomes, do they have the development resources to do that? And also, I mean, so not Crystal Dynamics, which is a studio underneath Square Enix delayed um, their Avengers game, which no one was really kind of excited for, by uh, four months, I believe, from the 15th of May to the 4th of September. They might make everyone a little more excited for it. Um, I mean, it just looks sort of like generic Avengers game. Yeah. Look, they're trying. It'll probably. Be better, I, I mean, I imagine yeah. kids will buy it. Just probably. Yeah. Um, I think, just I think it'll be good. Like it right sounds there. very like a Losing game a. servicey. Like it'll be continually updated, and there'll like be all this new a lot of games and stuff. That, so, yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't have. I don't have the Pokemon stuff. Pokemon stuff. Yeah, Pokemon is putting out Pokemon DLC for the first time ever in their entire oh, franchise yes. history. So I, I lied to you about this DLC. They've I had said that it was, it was um, basically just Losing like they were just going to put in uh, like all the Pokemon that weren't in there originally. Being dominated. Get aggressive. Which is not the case. There are They are actually making like content and putting things in the in the video yes. games. But they said that there will be each with each content update there will be both like returning Pokemon and new Pokemon. Securing C. Enemy RCXD yeah. in your AO. That's, and yeah, I, like, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a, I'm not a Pokemon secure. person, but it looks look, look pretty good. Hostiles have established multiple UAVs. Yeah, exactly. So it should be, it should be. I'm, I'm not too... Like, I'm not gonna get a Switch Securing just Bravo. for Pokemon. I might get it for... It's a cool. I, I don't know. Breath I got that. Help. Breath of... Breath of the Wild. And Pokemon. Yeah. But I don't have enough friends to play Smash, so I'm not going to Switch. Dude, basically... Switch is the bloody... It's the little console that could, it really is. And they're still like gangbusters yeah, as well, those Switches. And um, Pokemon, yeah, I think... We said that it wasn't selling great in comparison to like... Year of the year. Like Pokemon sales. But it's, it's, it's still bounce back and it's doing pretty well. I don't Hostile have sales UAV numbers in my head because I was not prepared to do this story. Good. But yeah, I will we're talking do my best to find them. It's just the numbers on the screen. Yeah, dude, I'll do it. I'm um, a game. I believe in you. Um, what else was on the list? Is that it? Everything except for. Um, for 1917, for them spicy nominations. So uh, that's not yes. that's no that's not the right leg. Ah, ah. All right, that's the right leg. So the nominations came out for like the Academy Awards. So I've been going to the movies like crazy and trying to watch many of them as I can, so that we can go through and have a real conversation about our thoughts for each category. So do we want to start from like? Desperate the times, bottom. desperate measures. We have to take this. And then work our way up bottom. to the best picture. Taking yeah, sure. Bravo. Alright, so, the Why award not? for visual Losing effects. Charlie. The nominees are Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, The Lion King, uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, and Hostile 1917. Yes. For, what is this? Is this this is, is the visual effects. effects. I skipped the, like, oh, the very effects. bottom two, because I, I've never seen any of those films. They're not used... Um, so yeah, I think Endgame is probably one of the, uh, top in that spot. I think Irishman has got it. Because, um, I haven't seen have, you, have you seen Irishman? I've only seen... Sure. You've seen Lion King, have you? Still Lion King. Oh, I saw Lion King. I thought Lion King was cool looking, but it wasn't the best in terms of... I, th I think Irishman has got it, because, like, all, basically every person in Irishman is, like, digitally remade to look younger. Alright. And it's not like they're taking an 85-year-old person and making them look 20. They're taking an 85-year-old person and making them look like mid-50s. Which is apparently a very unique challenge when it comes to VFX. Yeah, it's not as, it's not the same sort of thing as um, like what they did with Tony Stark. Yeah. In that one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I think, I think Irishman might have it. 
If not, um... I think Endgame probably has it, honestly. Uh, um. I mean, the Academy is usually not particularly kind to comic book films. Yeah, like, like I that. think, yeah, I think, I think Endgame probably deserves something this year because of, um, you know, it's the biggest, it was the biggest, like, film that has ever existed. Um, it's true, it's true. Ever. So, you know, like, you, you, I, think, I feel like just as a milestone, you kind of have to give them an Academy Award somewhere. For something, that's fair. All right, so sound mixing. Astrada, Ford v. Ferrari, Joker, 1917. At Astra, at Astra sorry. What did I say? Yeah. Astrada? I don't know. Ad Astrada. Yeah. Astrada. I think they're like the but, anti yeah, I don't agency in Australia. And yeah, once well, upon a time in Hollywood. So I've what only seen Joker and 1917, because I think uh, Ford v. Ferrari only had a limited release in Australia, I think, and I didn't get to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But you, you've seen 1917 Joker and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, thoughts? Yes. I hated Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It was possibly my least favourite movie ever. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Why? I mean, it was a, it was a well-made movie, I just think it was stupid. Right? Why? I, just, I think there are better... Like, it, it, what, it was just, the, I don't... Feel free to go into spoilers. What specifically did you not like about it? I was... The direction Marco style domination. was just weird. Like, I, it was just... Like, it, it didn't Secure feel the right. right. The, whole, the whole movie was just like, yeah, is something gonna happen? Is something down. gonna happen? Oh, everything happens all at once. None Here of this means Alpha. anything. I don't know why this means anything. I, it doesn't... I don't... Nothing meant anything. I... The, the, no... At no point was I like, oh, something's gonna happen. Take him, um, bravo. There is like a part uh, during the film where I don't remember his name. Someone probably remembers his name. Secure it uh, out for not Leonardo DiCaprio. Be locked down. Brad um, Pitt. Losing yeah, that C. guy we'll goes and control. basically just like beats up some hippies. Lost C. I think that's the idea. And I, I don't know what Margot Robbie was doing in the film. She probably, A. Like she probably could have just you know, stayed home. Taking C. Same with Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Like, the only interesting part was Brad Pitt. Not Brad Pitt. It wasn't Brad Pitt. Was it? I don't, I don't I haven't seen the film. I don't know. Well, he was the only interesting part. Whoever that guy was, he was, he was the only interesting part, and he was only interesting because he was an asshole. Just like, a little bit. Alright, so not, you reckon anything other than 1917? <laughs> Yeah, literally, I think, like, uh, do it, anything other than everything. I reckon 1970. And I'm probably gonna say 1970 for, anyway? for a lot of films. This is for, um, sound mixing. Sound mixing? I'm probably gonna say 1917 for pretty much everything that's nominated for, because I low-key think that film is brilliant. Or I high-key think that film is brilliant. Like, I, Pro I went to honestly, see it, Honestly, I think um, Ad Astra might win that. Uh... Um, Secure Last egg. night, and I believe when I came home, you asked me whether or not I needed to clean myself up, and I was like, "Dude, you're not wrong." <laughs> yeah, it was. We'll it's, get it's to my, my thoughts movie. about nine. I don't know if a bit later. I don't know if um, it's the losing C. Like sound design is what you're what you're looking for. I think it had pretty good sound design. But it had, it had pretty like good sound Like those gunfights, it, it, those gunfights are like really punchy. Secure in C. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll it see might, it might be Ad Astra. I, I haven't seen Ad Astra, but I did yeah. hear very good things about its sound design specifically. Alpha I don't, down. the only thing I can say definitively that I don't think it'll be is Joker. Cause... Yeah. I don't know why Joker is even there. If we be in they had that clown. song, Send in the Clowns. Mm -hmm. That's not I mean, sound design. I mean, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I mean, the, like the. Not, not the song. Um, they also had the. What's it called? Some, some sound effects. It's. It's there because it had sound effects. Take it, Charlie. And, like every other movie ever, it had sound effects. Losing Alpha. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, I don't think Joker. All locations locked I don't. I, I don't think. Once, I think if anything should win, it should be every movie but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Because right. I honestly just I despise that movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I want twenty dollars back. All right. 
Actually, they should pay I've, me. I told you not to do that film. I said you wouldn't like it. Yeah, well, I was gonna watch the rest, like some of the other Tarantino films, and then I'm like, he's a shit director. This guy doesn't know what he's doing anymore. He's he's very into himself, which I don't exactly. appreciate as a director. Oh, <laughs> I just annihilated my teammate. I'm sorry. Losing Charlie. Pay attention, dude. I knew there was um, a dude the up there, so he poked his head around the corner. I, I, I popped one in his brain. I'm sorry. Uh, sound mixing, sound editing. And editing? What are the nom um, nominees? Ford vs. Ferrari, Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Rise of Skywalker. I don't. I I think I said this before, but Ferrari. I've never understood the difference between sound editing and sound mixing. Half time. And I think um, consistently the same film has won both of them. Keep yeah, up the I mean, pressure. Break them down. Uh, look. Ford, I don't know what Ford vs Ferrari is, but if they had to make the, the, I think I think the sound mixing for Ford vs Ferrari is probably the harder. Like mo do, dealing with cars, that sounds like a, a hard ask. I mean, honestly. basically everything editing wise in 1917 was like god tier impossible. I was watching yeah. like a feature th about it last night, and it was like, I, I really want to know what like the full tale of the production is like. From the you moment they exactly started they to like this. how long it took them to make that film happen. Because they had to do like Enemy so many seen. ridiculous rehearsals. Because it's all like one long yeah, take. And it is it's, actually it's a all very continuous take. Security but it's Charlie. like, you know, is it? Can't... Oh no, I thought you said it was. I was like, oh, that's, that's, that sounds stupid. But no, like, yeah. even, like a continuous all, but even all the takes in that's there are very long and you can't Enemy like, you can't fuck that up. But again, we, we will. I'll I might reserve UAV a second for this and just cry over 1917. So you're, good. you're a fan. Go watch it again. <sighs> I honestly might. <laughs> it was so good. I watched. I watched. I watched Endgame again. I thought Endgame the second time around wasn't as good as the first. I think it was a very like Security sensational B. film in compare. I think. I think Infinity War was the film um, in, in terms of those two. That's kind of what we enjoy think. Yeah, that's Ford versus Ferrari. But again, I think, I think 1917. Ford versus Ferrari. I think 1917. I think, look, 1917. I think look, 1917 for every film. Just because I haven't seen Ford versus Ferrari, that's why I'm choosing it. Um, because it just sounds difficult to deal with cars. Oh my god, editing and mixing perspective. All right, production beat. design. The nominees were Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Securing C. What is this for? Production. Jojo Rabbit probably has a has a chance here. Again, I think 1917. Yeah, and look, yeah, 1917. Look, I'm. That's like that's the, the, the level they had to go. Like they basically dug and created like five miles worth of. Them. It's all like shot in yeah, real you time, walk right? So if they walk down yeah. a trench for eight minutes. They have to have eight minutes of trench to walk down. <laughs> yeah, and they run down, so it's even it's even longer than you know. So that was like a lot of their they... rehearsal, like figuring out like, how long does it take us to get from point A to point B, how much like stage do we need to make essentially. Like honestly, I think the idea, like my my guess. For all of these will probably be 1917. I'm just trying to like, you know, come up with something else That's to fair. say. <laughs> Cause 1917 was a great film. Um and I I'm just going off um, but, um I, th I think Jojo yeah, Rabbit guessing. also had pretty good production design. As did the Irishman. Yeah. I, I haven't seen Parasite. Parasite is uh Parasite, I've heard incredibly good things about it. I don't think anyone has ever said anything bad about it. But it was only out yeah, in one right. place in Australia because it's a Japanese film. I think it's a Japanese film. Oh, okay. It's an so Asian film. We don't give a shit about it, basically. So, yeah, I think, and it, it didn't come out in any cinemas that are, that are near me. So I didn't get to see it, but I've heard very good things. Yeah, all right. That's the, yeah, okay, next one. So what Let's did we it. say? Next. We said 1917 or Jojo Rabbit? Yeah, probably 1917. 
Um, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm I trying not, not to say I have not seen any of these films, any of the nominees for original song. Um, can't let oh, dude, you throw yourself have. away by Toy Story. From Toy Story, Into the Unknown, Frozen. That's I'm gonna love me again, UAV, Rocket Man. Certainly. Um, Standing With You, Breakthrough, and Stand Up from Harriet. Uh, probably either the Elton yeah. John movie or Toy Story. Toy Story hit you right in the feels, alright? Dude, like, I feel that. That's that why I didn't go and see Toy Story, because I'm not paying 20 bucks to cry. I cry for free every yeah. night, it's fine. Exactly, so, you know, I think Toy Story or... Um, Toy Story or the Elton John because I had a lot of uh, Did you not see Rocket Man? I thought you did. I was going to. I didn't have time. I had to go. Something I don't know what it was. I examined it. Yeah, what's the. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think those so are you the think Rocket Man? Bring this home. Into the Unknown is cool. Original score? Um, Joker? Little Women, Marriage Story, Joker. 1917. I've actually seen all oh, these films. I, I think yeah, Little Women. I think so Little Women had a really, really good score. Yeah. Okay. 1917 also had like that. really good like as I said, sound design. I don't think its music was particularly interesting though. And I don't even really remember the music from Marriage Story. <laughs> even I though I think Marriage see. Story is pretty brilliant. But we did what we were paid to do. Isn't yeah, like so... one of the women uh, like a musician in Little Women? So yes, that's yeah. So that's probably that's it, it's probably Joker or Little Women. Honestly. And I, uh, as I say, I think Little Women had like a really good score. I think Little Women. But if you're looking, really film. You should, you should go with it. Uh, makeup and hairstyle. Yeah. You should. It's very good. Makeup, makeup and hairstyling, and styling. bombshell, what do we have from Joker, the Judy, Malif Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and 1917. I think bombshell. I haven't actually seen bombshell, but it's like they're they're recreating people that actually exist, basically, and that always sits well with the oh, academy. Yeah, that's probably. It's yeah, about like the like win. whole Fox News debacle with like sexual assault and things. Honestly, I, I saw the trailer and I was anything. like, I am not gonna watch that film because it looks. <laughs> insanely tonally inconsistent like it's a film about like real sexual assault that actually happened and they use Billie Eilish's bad guy in the trailer like no I'm out peace I ain't seeing that and it just felt like very yeah. sort of Oscar baby and I'm usually not a fan of films that are trying very hard to get an Oscar yeah that's fair yeah Those so I, th I think bombshell I think That's... Joker probably won't win anything, even though I kind of want it to. Um, because super villain sort of thing, and also there's a lot of controversy surrounding the Joker. Um, that sort um, of thing, so, you know. International feature film we will skip over, because I don't think any of us have seen any of them. What are the, what are the international feature film films? Uh, Corpus Christi. Yeah, Corpus Christi, yeah, Honeyland, Les Miserables, Pain and Glory, Parasite. Parasite. Film editing? That's my guess. Probably Parasite, yeah. Yeah. Um, film um, editing, let's go. Film editing, Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Parasite. Parasite. Um... I, I think... I, don't, I haven't seen any of these. Maybe Jojo Except Rabbit or mine. Irishman? I think they yeah, both do very fair. interesting, like, there are some shots that are very interesting. I don't know whether or not that would come under the category of direction or editing, though. Like, definitely Jojo Rabbit, there are some, there's some really clever, like, foreshadowing within the edits. Yeah. But we'll, Get in I, my I've, way. I I've grappled with you. my thoughts about Jojo Rabbit. Consistently. When, when we get you enjoyed to, it, didn't you? I did, but there the are objectives. some... Considerable. I, I think I talked about it in the last, last podcast we did, if not the podcast before. And it's, it's a complicated film. Uh, documentary okay, feature. Lockdown. Again, I don't think any of us have seen any of them. Nope, probably not. Costume design. If you want to list them off, just for um, I mean, I can. American Factory, The Cave, Ed, The Edge of Democracy, Force Aimer, oh, and me. Honeyland. I'm going to yeah. guess and say The Edge of Democracy. Yeah, why not? 
but it might also be the um, yeah the let, let's say the edge of democracy. Uh, costume design: the Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Again, I think Little Women. Yeah, I think. On like the they, they do a very good job of sort of moderating the like the feel of sort of um, early I want to say like 17th century America like 1700s America. Because yeah, I think it's, I should go, yeah I should absolutely go see this because I, I was set actually interested just in saying after that. the Civil War I want to say. Yeah, that's fair. That As makes a, sense. like. It, as I say, I didn't like. I've I've Hostile never thresher, I've never read Little Women. I've never seen any interpretation of Little Women. I kind of like vaguely knew what it was about. That thing. Hostiles have established multiple UAVs. So I reckon Little Women. What do you reckon? Yeah, Luke. You back? All right. So I reckon Little Women for costume design. What do you reckon? Um. Yeah. It looks nice from the center of security. I don't know all the nominees again. Enemy took Alpha. Uh, hang on. Can Irishman kind of stop blocking automatic clicks? It means I have to unlock it every time. Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women. What's going on? I'm securing Brown. But I don't think Joker will win anything, honestly. He got the nominations, I don't think it'll get a, a win. <laughs> That's so, fair, yeah. yeah. So I, I reckon with the women. Um, cinematography. The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse, 1917. I think 1917 has got this in the Bravo. fucking bag. I think you're having a joke if anything else gets it. Dude, from... What's that one movie called? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Losing seats. That's my vote. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you reckon? Yeah, my vote is for that movie to be like... Put in the trash. Being dominated. Put set positions. on fire. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone I don't so like viscerally upset movie. by a movie. <laughs> I do. I did not like it. I, I had to pay twenty, like twenty-two dollars to go see it on. I watched it on the like extreme screen at Hoyt. Securing C. And I was like, this is. I didn't Last enjoy it. Attack chopper inbound. Any any part of it. Enemy health And when 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 you one of your main actors and I. Two, when I say two of your main actors out of the three weren't, weren't important B. to anything in the plot, G secure. I hate that. Uh, I, I, I just don't yeah, like I think it. 1917. Um, yeah, that's, animated feature. Yeah, Again, I have not seen any of these. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, Toy Story. I Lost My Body, Klaus. The missing link, Fight which I heard was terrible. Take this back. And Toy Story 4. Yeah, all of these bad. Oh, yeah, Toy Story 4. Yeah. Uh, the, I imagine the, How to Train Your Dragon 3. Train your dragon. Yeah, yeah. How to Train Your Dragon 3 might win it, but I'm pretty sure it's not Toy Story 4. Toy Story? Alright. Toy Story 4. Original screenplay. Knives Out. Marriage Story. 1917. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Parasite. Parasite. I reckon Security. Knives Out. I reckon Knives Out on Marriage Story. Probably not out. What is this for again? Original screenplay. Yeah, mine's out. This isn't zero. Marriage story is very good, but I think I don't think it's. Screenplay. I don't think it's it's screenplay is strength. I think it's it's screenplay is very sort of like. It's I mean it's a film about divorce, so it does all the things you, you would assume a film about divorce is gonna do. It just does them in kind of a unique way. Yeah. Whereas I think yeah, I, I haven't seen the these objectives. Films, so I think Aside Knives Out is time, like it's see. not it's not necessarily a unique idea, but I think it, it lends itself. Like I think Ryan Charlie Johnson, is sort of, the kind of films he like to make, out. likes to make, lend himself very well to right play. And I think Knives Out was really good. I really Hostiles enjoyed that. Multiple UAVs. I think it. People don't like Ryan Johnson. So he probably yeah, but, like I, I think I said this. Like, <laughs> I was surprised that his name was anywhere near the market for that film. But it was like all over the trailers. They were like, it's a Ryan Johnson film. And I was like, yeah, why would you I'm... want to say that? Like, everyone hates that man. Ruined the style. Yeah. It's interesting that Rise of Skywalker even got a nomination. Um, well, I forgot what it was for. It was like, it was really. I don't know. Uh, it was a. Like, RCXD ready to deploy. 
It's just the same uh, score from every other movie. Nominations for a couple of things. But yeah, I, I think Knives Out. I think Knives Out was, good. Like, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll believe you. I haven't seen it, but I'll believe you. You should see. I mean, I could do like full reviews for all of these films, but as I say, Knives Out was a lot of fun. It sort of it plays with the genre of conventions. It's like a whodunit, and it it plays with the idea of a whodunit a lot. I think there are a couple of things that it tries to do, like to be intentionally subversive, that maybe don't work in its favor in the long haul, but also because it's like it's subversive, but it's like because you I'm know that's not going to be the case because that would undermine the whole point of a whodunit. Yeah, you like you know that that's not the case, and you're just kind of along for the ride. And I, th I think it's it's very well crafted in that like They're you could feasibly figure out who did it before like the film tells you, which would just be very difficult. And I think that that's always sort of the mark of a good crime show or whatever is like can you figure out who's done it beforehand, beforehand, and how easy is it? If it's too easy and you're halfway through the film and you already know everything and who's done it, then the other half, then half the film is boring. Yeah. And if it's too hard, and basically, like, the wacky detective man comes out with some, like, a whole bunch of bullshit right at the Charlie. end, and you just sort of lose all investment in the film, because you're like, well, I didn't know any of these things, but like, he had a whole bunch of information that I didn't. And I think Knives Out balances that line very cleverly, very cleverly, and it, it's very good at telling you what you need to pay attention to, and what's important. Yeah. Look, I'm, I might see it. Is it on Netflix? Uh, no, I saw it at the cinema. Hostile UAV circling. Yeah, that was fun. I don't, that I was like, a fun, my, fun experiment. My big um, issue with uh, Dunnets is I find it very difficult to keep track of all the different players, but I found it really easy in Knives Out, because they're all such... They all have such unique Take writing. A. Yeah, okay. It's like Clue, isn't it? Yeah, it's Which like is. it's a Who Done It. It's like Who. It's like Clue. Yeah. It's Clue. Likely. Adapted screenplay. The nominees were The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and No Second Chances. Little Women. This is all or nothing. Why not? Enemy I reckon Little Women. Detected. Yeah. I reckon yeah. the Little wi Little Women or maybe Securing Jojo out. Rabbit. Yeah. Hostile attack chopper. I think I think Little Women probably will get it. But I it, think Little it, Women. From what I've heard, it's not bad. It's it's very good. I quite enjoy it. Uh, director, yeah, Martin Scorsese for The Irishman, Todd Phillips for Joker, 197, uh, Sam Mendes for 1917, Quentin Tarantino for One Time, Sam and uh, Bong John for Parasite. I think if Sam Mendes doesn't win Best Director for 1917, you're having a fucking joke. Dude, I'll be I think mad. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think that's legit insanity. I think we can all go home. 1917 yeah, then... is literally the greatest film I've ever seen in my whole life. Probably. Okay. You, you don't have, I, I don't think that's true. Um, I think it was a good film, right? I, I said it's to you before we started that like, I was legitimately up to like 2am last night. Like I think uh, we, we signed off and we stopped playing video games about midnight to 1am and I was still up for like 2 you still like, about it? 2 a.m. Literally just like staring at my room thinking about how brilliant of a film 1917 is. It is so it's, it's, good. It's, like it's so, it's so good. It was like a religious it's, experience. It's, I don't believe in God, but my God, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Look, it's, it's, it's a good movie. I can tell you that much. Um, Literally, like, stop whatever you are doing right now. Put this podcast down. Go and see 1917. That film is insane. It's so good. You're probably uh, hyping it up too much. I really don't think I am. I think that film is actually <laughs> like it's so good. It it's just brilliant. It's it's so completely the most brilliant thing ever. Yeah. Okay, I'll believe you. I, I don't... I haven't seen many films. I, it's probably one of the best films I've ever seen, but I think... I've, it's not Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, so I think... I think Sam Mendes has got that in the bag for 1917. That he film should. If anybody else Actually wins. brilliant. Dude, Quentin Tarantino went for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and you'll cry. 
I will like I don't I don't cry often, all right. But that I will I will have visible tears. I will, yeah, I, so Sam Mendes is my pick. It wouldn't surprise me if Quentin Tarantino wins though. I know he's gonna win. I know he's I know they're just gonna fuck me and I'm gonna just take it in the ass and they're gonna be like, well, you know what you should have done? You should have friggin loading exploits. This is bad, Sam. You should have you should have shouldn't have watched you shouldn't have put twenty dollars down to go see that shitty match. film. I didn't. Um, I no, haven't like, seen it, and I told you. you not to see it. My conscience yeah. is clear of this. Uh, so, yeah, well, supporting actress. At least now um, you know not to watch it. Dude, I knew not to watch it right from the Scarlett ground, so. Johansson. Su supporting actress, Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. Um, Laura Dern, Marriage Story. Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit. Florence... We pulled ahead. Uh, uh, Pung? P P P Florence in the Machine? No. <laughs> Florence P U G H, however you want to pronounce that, and Margot Robbie Bombshell. I think either Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit or Florence for Little Women. Yeah. Um. Look, I, and there's, there's at least Margot like Robbie's not in there for that one movie. For Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the movie that we shall not. She name. wasn't in the movie. <laughs> She, she wasn't there. I don't. There was no reason. Like she, she was advertised to be there, and she just wasn't. All right. And she, there was no. She was. She didn't exist. You, if you ever see it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, she, she's. Enemy you see her. Above. She wasn't in the movie. She's just. Yeah, she's just there. All right. All right. Let's calm down. Yeah, I think both of those <laughs> so women bad. do exceptional jobs in the the role. Yeah, so I heard Scarlett Johansson was doing a very good job in um. In that one movie, in Joe Joe Rabbit. Rabbit. and Marriage Story. Scarlett Johansson's a good year, dude. She's been nominated for a bunch yeah. of stuff. And then she's got her own, like fully, fully her own movie. It's um, so she's she's gonna be making bank soon. Probably one of the yeah, I, like I I was very much like Scarlett ever. Johansson is Black Widow and nothing else, and that's all that she will ever play because that's all she can play. But between Marriage Story and Jojo Rabbit, my God, that woman is talented. That woman is legit talented. Yeah. She, she is just considerably has considerably really more than just the pretty while. face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's, uh, yeah, I think both of them have supporting actress. Do really well in those roles. I yeah. honestly don't think anyone I haven't seen Richard Jewell, so I can't speak to Kathy Bates' performances. But I I it would or Bombshell, but it would surprise me. I would I would be legitimately mad if Laura Dern went to the marriage story. Because she's basically not in the film. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. like she is, but she like she doesn't really do anything. She's, that she's not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about Margot Robbie being in friggin' once but she's, just, she's there. You can say that much. Oh my god! Jesus. And that's about it. So lead actress, uh, Cynthia Erivo for Harriet, Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story, for Marriage Story, Saoirse Ronan for Little Women, Charlize Theron for Bombshell. Renee Zellweger for Judy. I think either Scarlett Johansson or uh, Saoirse Ronan. Dude, do you do you think Scarlett Johansson might win too? Supporting actress and leading actress. That Potentially. Would, that would be a very good year for her. She'd be like, holy shit, I'm I'm I'm, I'm the man. I mean, her. I'm I think woman. she's probably the best part of Marriage Story. Maybe I think Adam Drive is very good in Marriage Story, Adam but there are, there are some scenes and like some. I was honestly surprised that Noah Baumbach, the director of Marriage Story, didn't get nominated for Best Director because there are some. There are some scenes the way he directs is like crazy good, and you couldn't do that if you didn't have an actress as talented as Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Like there's a scene where she's like, it's like this one long shot. Where she's talking to her um, divorce lawyer about like her relationship with um, Adam Driver's character, and it's like this one long yeah. shot that, like, as like her performance gets more and more intense, the camera like slowly pans in and like draws you more and more and more into the story. And I was like sitting there being like, "This is fucking brilliant! My we God!" The <laughs> Man, he's a gamer. That's He's a, he's a capital G gamer. He plays the games. Yeah, what, who's, who's next? I mean, imagine it's supporting actors. 
like melee. We're winning this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yeah, as I say, Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story or Third Line for Little Women. I think both very well in those roles. Uh, supporting actor. Uh, Tom Hanks, A Beautiful Day <laughs> in the Neighborhood. Anthony Hopkins, The Two Popes. Uh, Al Pacino, The Irishman. Joe Pesci, The Irishman. Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Brad Pitt I was actually the only part of that movie that was know. good. I didn't particularly like The Irishman, and I've not seen... Um, the Two Popes was good. I didn't watch all of it because it's like it's all in like Latin or something. It's not in English basically, so it's it's kind of hard to like watch, especially if you're like I'm a very slow reader, so I have to rewatch really a lot of scenes and I'm not really paying attention to the acting. I'm just sort of reading the subtitles. Yeah, I think Brad Pitt. This is the only award that I'm like, yeah, maybe. All right. Maybe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood deserves maybe a little bit. Because Brad Pitt was the only character in that film. Um, we have the advantage. So yeah. That's about all I have to say. I didn't see those other ones. And like, it's, it's a bit of a thing when I'm like, and the only award that I'm even willing I'm to give control. to that film is because he kind of just existed and he was a character. So, you know. He was in it, he was present, he showed up on the day. <laughs> yeah. And said yeah. some lines to the so, camera. Yeah, that's... Nice. Look, if, if Leonardo DiCaprio is nominated for the lead actor... He is, actor, he's nominated for lead actor. Holy shit. <laughs> so, lead actor. Like, now, oh. now that we're there. Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory. Leonardo DiCaprio, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver, Marriage Story, Joaquin Phoenix, Joker, and Jonathan Price, Two Popes. I think maybe Joaquin Phoenix or Adam Driver? Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix, um... Or oh, Adam, yeah, Adam Driver Take probably. The Adam um, Driver is insanely talented. Like, I I think I said in our Rise of Skywalker review that I watched that film basically back to back with Marriage Story, and he's crazy. Like, that man has some range. Yeah, I also think that... Adam Driver is the best part of Sky the Star Wars films, the last three, and I'm pretty sure everyone believes is 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 and like that again, as well. much the same as with Scarlett Johansson. There are some there are some long takes so things that you spoils. just couldn't do if you didn't have an actor that's as talented as Adam Driver. As Adam Driver. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Uh. So, oh, I best picture. Best picture. This is this is the one. This is the ticket. Ford versus Ferrari. The Irishman. 1917. Jojo Rabbit. 1917. Joker. 1917. Little Women. Marriage 1917. Story. 1917. 1917. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, Parasite. That one. Not that one. I think. Yes. I don't think it's 1917. <gasps> I I adore 1917. I think 1917 is. Probably the best film I have seen in a very long time, potentially ever. And it's not best I picture. Think, I think the way that film creates tension and creates plot and uh, is is just it's 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 so good. It's the greatest thing that I've ever seen ever. But I don't think it's best. Picture. Yes. I I. I yeah, don't know, fair. I don't even, I can't even fathom why The Irishman is nominated for Best Picture. You, yeah, you didn't like that film at all? It's not so much that I didn't like it, it's just that, so it's a three and a half hour film, right? And I got to about an hour and a half through it, and I was like, what am I watching here? Like, what is, what, like, what is the plot, essentially? Like, it's, all the performances are pretty good to great the directing is fine the cinematography is fine like it's all it's all good it's just like it's basically just like the day-to-day -day life of a mobster like there is no MacGuffin. there is no central driving force of the plot like in 1917 they need to get from point a to point b to deliver the thing to save the people right plot happens yeah but it's just kind of it just exists in um, you know marriage story okay. they're going through a divorce so it it starts before their divorce, sort of in the proceedings to their divorce, then they have a little bit about, like, the actual 
like in court and then it ends Good to sort go. of post that. Right? Yeah. And the same with yes. like oh, Jojo and Jojo Rabbit. Damage. They all have plot and structure and they have something in them that propels the plot forward. But Irishman didn't. It just sort of happens. And there's never a point where it's like, this is the end goal. This is where this film ends because this is what it is like what the characters in the film are trying to achieve. We've taken the lead. Oh. So I, as I say, like it I, just, I, I think just... I got about half an hour through it, and I was like, I'll pick this up later, and then never picked it up because I just didn't care enough. Yeah, that's more than fun. Jojo more Rabbit, I really liked, but it's you so. Don't think it's best picture though. It might be best picture. I think either this mm. or Little Women are probably best picture. It's probably best picture. Apparently, people were mad that um, Little Women's director Greta Gerwig didn't get nominated for best director, even though like. No, like, Little Women's a good film, it's potentially best picture, but in terms of, like, directorial achievement, no, like, nah. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so, going back, Jojo Rabbit. I have many, 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 many complicated th feelings towards Jojo Rabbit. I think it has a really well-created story, I think it... Is like emotionally resonant. I think it tells an important story, especially in sort of the modern, the modern era. I think it it takes like sort of World War Two and Nazism and kind of applies it to and, and create uses that to create a message that I think is really important in the modern world. But it's a comedy and it's marketed as a comedy, but it's not funny. And that's not to say the jokes aren't funny. It's just like. The subject matter and the context are so not funny that the comedy just kind of feels yeah, no. out of place. And again, that's not to say the jokes aren't funny. Like, for example, I guess this is kind of like a min minor spoiler. But as I say, I think the film's really oh, no. good. There's there's a scene where so Tiger Watiti plays Hitler, yes. or like this this kid's imagination of Hitler, right? Jojo Bet slaps yeah. like imagined best friend who is Hitler. And there's a scene where the two of them are sitting down eating dinner, and Tiger Watiti's sitting there as Hitler eating like a fried unicorn head, like you know how you'd like in comics where you'd see like a like a pig with the apple in its mouth that's been fried. Oh yeah, like that, but a it. unicorn, which is objectively funny. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to screenshot that and show it to someone, that's funny. But it doesn't yeah. make sense. In, in it's not the, that it doesn't context. make sense. It's just that like within the context of the film. It's such an intense film with so many intense things happening and so many intense, like, themes that it's, like, it's kind of hard to laugh at. Yeah, that's fair. Like, a comedy exists because it's funny people in a funny situation doing a funny thing, right? This isn't that. It's one yep. funny person in a very intense, real situation doing something that's funny. Yeah. It's, it doesn't lend itself to comedy as much as Which, like, it, like, it um, just... Sorry. I, I was thinking about it last night. I was like, this, uh... Um... I think I'm thinking about 1917. Dude, I'm always thinking about 1917. <laughs> <laughs> My film is so good. It's so good, Lachlan. That it's like, I... It wouldn't surprise me if... Um... Taiguatiti wanted to make this film without his character in it, but he couldn't sell it to a board of executives. They were like, it's a Taika Waititi film, but it's not funny, and you're not playing a qu weird, quirky character. And he's like, I'll put myself in the film, and I'll be weird, quirky Hitler. It'll be great. Yeah, he... he, he, he it's Either that, he, does he or have alternatively, Taika Waititi is so egotistical that he, and so lacking in talent as an actor that he can't do anything other than comedy, but he had to be in his film. So he created a character for himself that is kind of to the detriment of the film. Yeah, that's fine. That's, uh, look, it's a it's still a not not a bad film. Though. It's it's as I said, it is by no means a bad film, and I don't want anything that I've yeah. just said to take away from that. I think it has some really, I think it has potentially a career best for Scarlett Johansson, if not Marriage Story is probably a career best. And I think it's it's subject matter and like the the way it presents its themes is incredibly relevant in the modern day. It's just like because of the way that it's presented, I feel like so many people in my cinema. They just like they got to like the final Didn't act. Know like this was not what I signed up for. I signed up for weird, quirky Hitler. 
And this is not that. Yeah. This is like deeply thematically res resonant and incredibly relevant in the modern day. Yeah, this is. Yeah, that's a uh, look. I should go see it. This is still in theaters, but I want to see Little Women. And, and it's, it's also like it's. To see everything. It's a Fox Searchlight production as well. Like I looked into its production. It only costs like twenty-five million to make, which begs the question of like. Did Tiger Watiti really have to like bend over backwards to a board of execs to convince them to give him that much money? Because that's not a lot of money. Yeah, like in regards to filmmaking, twenty-five million is chump change. Dude, twenty-five million? They should give all that money to Australia. I don't want it all. Just give it all to me. What are people doing that? Why, why were giving they, you why money? Yeah, I'm aware. No. While we're on the topic of Australia as well, um, yeah, there's a lot of companies, Bungie, um, Division, yeah, Bungie, they're kind of like doing things in the games. Of people are like sorting, sorting things out to help us out because the whole country's on fire. It's less bad than it was sort of around New Year's and Christmas. A while away. Yeah. But it's still not but great. We're not doing too poorly. Yeah, it's, it's still on fire and it's still, people are still having I'm issues. Actually I don't think they're dying uh, as much. Anyone feels so inclined? Yeah. Because I think we're gonna be RCXD in your AO. That doesn't surprise me. And uh, Little Women as well. I think Little Women is very good. I think the way it presents, like, sort of it, like it doesn't surprise me that Emma Watson's in this film basically because it's like it's it's feminist literature and it's all about women, but it's like it's not Make it official. like wonder woman or oh yeah like... you can see it going into this you can see it going into this film from a mile away it's very yeah, it's, it's a not very like Watson it's film. not sort of it's not wonder woman and it's not um captain marvel in that like women are great and this is how women like it's very much like this is what feminism actually is and this is what feminism represents it's not all the brouhaha that pop culture has made it out to be which i think yeah. is really good i think it it is a very well made film it's very well acted so yeah, those are well, my picks. You, you I also thought Marriage Story was very, very good. And yes, I think you, if anyone you has you a Netflix like subscription, Scar you should watch Scar Marriage Jones. Story, because it's really good. Again, it is kind of yeah. formulaic. Because it like, it's, it's a divorce film. So all the things you would think happen in the divorce film happen in this film. But yeah, it's exactly. so well acted and so well like directed and performed that it it's like really engrossing and it's very like humanized like there is no sort of big blowout moment where they like scream at each other for like an hour like there is kind of that but again it's so like human in its design AO pacified. Government forces take the yeah. it's a it's a good it's a good divorce film which is what you, you, you're trying to say it's a it's yeah yeah <laughs> it's not just a formula that they're following it's it's a good it's a good film it's actually directed well and all that sort of stuff so yeah i mean i'll believe you i'll believe everything so you say what were your picks for um, best picture got the nominee ford versus ferrari the irishman jojo rabbit joker little women marriage story 1917 once upon a time in hollywood 1917 you think 1917 yeah 1917 joker yeah, might I, win but i don't think based on i this, could like, i could literally sit here are. for an hour and talk about all the ways I think 1917 is potentially the greatest thing I've ever seen put to film, ever. Yeah. But I don't think it's. But better. we don't need to. Yeah, we. Yeah, that's fair. So I might do that. I might Look, do I haven't seen the other films. Like a whole essay about how it's like fucking actually the most brilliant thing that has ever been brilliant ever, and everyone should see it because it needs to make every piece of money ever. Alright, give me a second, I'm just gonna restart the, um, recording. Cool! Alright, I'm here. It's me. Oh, you should wait it, because we're, uh, I, I mean, that's the end of, that's basically the end of the podcast this week. Or it is. Oh, anyway. I needed to, I needed to toilet pretty, pretty badly. I oh, didn't have a, right. I, <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, yeah. as always, links to everything we talked about will be in the description. Uh, I think I mentioned that w this one will come out on Spotify at some point, probably tomorrow after I'm done editing the video. Yeah, because we have art. Because we have art, we did it, we nailed it. 
made off. We didn't off. nail it. We just have. We just have. It's fine. We did it. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. shit. It's almost as bad as. <laughs> you really don't. Was it the name of the film? I do. Yeah. I don't. Negative one. Please get rid of. Just it shouldn't have exist existed. I'm sorry. <laughs> so mad about like, it. Like I don't. I, I don't ever want it to exist. All right. So once you're done with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, this will come out probably tomorrow. So it'll be Monday. The uh, what's the date today? No, that'll be Sunday. The Today's Saturday. Yeah, so that'll be tomorrow. Will be Sunday the, 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 the something of the January. Sun Sunday the eighteenth of January. There will probably no, be an audio version. No, it's today. You you sausage. What? You absolutely. Yeah, so I said tomorrow will be the nineteenth, won't it? No, you said tomorrow's the eighteenth. You oh, sausage. Whatever. So it will come out Sunday the nineteenth. Of January, yes. The nineteenth? Are you sure it'll come out? Jared yes. Killed that guy while he was taking a piss. It's a bit rude. Yes, probably. Um, and there will um, also Sam's be an audio version that will come out. Apparently, bad. Spotify is very, very um, picky and annoying about it, so that might come out slightly later. But it, I will at least attempt to make it come out Monday. Yep. As always, Ooh, yeah. my Twitter handle is in the description. And, Same. Um, you don't have a Twitter. Exactly. That's why it's in the description. And as will links to everything we talked about and as many references as I can find to everything we say um, will be in the description. Ever. And if yeah. I can't find a reference to something, I will probably annotate the screen and annotate tell you it. that it was a lie. Yes. Or it was um, an untruth. It's, it's always... It's always lies. Sam lies about everything. Um, everything he's should, ever said to me. We should rename the podcast. Is just, we lie. We lie about so many things. We lie. Lies. Maybe that's what we should name the episode. Lies. No, I've already, I've already got an episode name. It's fine. Don't worry. I figured it out. I'm a gamer. All What's right. the episode name? Do You'll I see. have to wait to find out? You'll see. Oh Suspense. man, this is a cliffhanger. Holy All right, shit. So thank I'm you for not ready in. for it. It's been a riot. Thank you very uh, much. See you Give next me... week at the same time. Yes? Same time? Yes. Shit. Um, maybe. Is that, that going to be a problem? We'll, we'll... No. We'll just, you know, you're making promises. I mean, does this time not work for you, Lachlan Gow? Should be fine. You just make, you know, you're making promises. You know? Yep. You gotta, you gotta, promises. you're making promises for that, for that 8.30 AEST. 8.30 AEST on a Saturday. I AEST. But, I don't you know, know, we'll find out. Right. I'm killing the stream. It's over. We're done.